The National Organic Program Standards, narrated by Julie Larson. The National Organic Program Standards are found underneath the Code of Federal Regulations, the CFR, which is the United States uh, complete rules and regulations for all the different uh, departments, areas that can come under federal regulation. There are 50 different uh, titles. Agriculture is under Title Seven, And the CFR contains all the rules and regulations that might have to do with shipping or the Postal Service, environmental issues, um, anything that has a rule or regulation. Sometimes it is called uh, administrative law. So uh, after, uh, so within the agricultural um, part of it, you have it's found under subtitle B, and then it further gets subdivided into chapter one. And then subchapter M, Organic Foods Production Act provisions. And then under that, we still have part 205. And then the part 205 will be further subdivided into uh, more subparts. So within Part 205, the National Organic Production Standards, we have subparts A through G. And this is really the nitty-gritty, the down and dirty detail of the rules and regulations of organic production. Uh, it's a great reference tool. Uh, if there's any question uh, that you might have while you're going through the process, or any questions about how to do something, or if something's okay or not okay. Uh, it gives you clear um, details on uh, whether it's okay or not. While this is kind of the definitive um, book on all the rules and regulations, I would highly recommend that you go to your certifi uh, certifying agency um, also and make sure that the way you've interpreted uh, these rules and regulations is also the way they are reading them uh, so that everybody's on the same page. While you may not want to spend a tremendous amount of time going through the subparts A through G with a fine tooth comb, uh, the first subpart, subpart A, definitions, is a great place to uh, go over uh, the definitions, the meanings of the terms, make sure that you're on the same page with what you're thinking organic is. Um, that part's not very long and uh, important to uh, read over. Subpart B, applicability. Uh, so here they're going to, uh, it goes over what can be certified, uh, what type of record keeping needs to be done, um, and also it, in, uh, along with other things, but uh, one of the important parts is what cannot be used in organic production. Uh, very important uh, that uh, you know what's okay, but even more important to know what is not okay, because once it is put in your field, um, it's three years 
uh, before uh, you can be certified organic. It takes three years. So very important to know what is not okay. Continuing on with the subparts of the um, federal regulations, uh, C has information about organic production and handling requirements, and that's really the uh, how you're going to manage your farm. So it includes uh, all the rules and regulations for land use, vegetable, um, so whether you're doing vegetable production or livestock, um, it is uh, all broken down into um, what you can do or how you should do and manage your farm according to the organic rules. And that is really, those rules are what uh, when you, when the inspector comes out, uh, those are the things that you will be following, that they will be looking at to make sure you're following those rules. So then uh, under subparts, you have D, which is labels labeled in marketing information. Uh, very, very, very specific rules on how you can use the organic label, where you can use it, um, uh, um, a lot more information than you would think. Uh, and this is all broken down exactly how they want you to um, use that USDA organic label. E is regarding certification. So basically it just goes boom, 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 process for becoming certified. And finally, subparts F and G in F. Uh, has all the rules and regulations for certifying agencies, uh, the process of how to become an agent, what they need to follow, and the rules and regulations they need to handle uh, and, and abide by in order to um, uh, certify farms. And then G is administrative, and that uh, sort of a catch-all um, so it has the national list of allowed substances, which uh, as a grower, producer, handler, you will um, get to know this list pretty well. If you ever have any question about is something okay to use on your farm, this is the list that you'll go to. So they handled this under uh, subpart G. Also under G are the fees. Um, and yes, there are fees that go with being certified. And uh, also under here is non-compliance. So if you um, are already certified organic, but you, uh, the inspector comes out to your farm, finds something that you are not complying with, uh, there's a whole way that this is handled. Uh, there's a, a very specific... Um, method for how to go about complying with that particular rule, uh, the notification that you are not complying, and also it uh, contains the information um, for uh, if you are found to be uh, negligent and uh, that they can actually find you and uh, hopefully it doesn't get to that point. Okay, so we've gone through all of the different rules and regulations, where to find them. Um, as you can probably already tell, there's quite a bit of uh, record keeping and um, management that goes into becoming certified organic. So is it really worth it to you uh, and your farm and your business to be certified. And so one of the things you want to look at is will you be able to get more income and will that income from being certified organic, will that outweigh the cost of being certified? Uh, certification fees vary, uh, vary 
quite wide, um, widely, $200 to $2,000. Um, many agencies require, they have different fee structures. Some of them require a percentage of your, uh, your, uh, what your income from those products. Uh, some of them are just straight fees. Uh, so uh, that needs to be taken into consideration. And then if you are going to have to charge more, which you will, will your market be willing to pay? Will your clients be able to pay? Will you go to the farmer's market and be standing next to a conventional person? And will they really appreciate what has gone into um, all the work, extra work you've done becoming certified? Um, and that's only something that you as a farmer or producer can figure out. Um, but you hopefully have a good idea of what you'll be able to sell your product for. And also, um, your clientele. Are these people who are really going to care about uh, your, your product being certified organic? That's really the bottom line. Um, and if you don't think you have a big enough market for it, then uh, you can certainly search out a new or different one. Um, but you need to get that clear before you even begin the certification process.